All right, guys, here you go. It's the Camp Chef Gridiron 36 inch griddle big breakfast. You guys have been asking for it. Here it is. I sometimes think this might be more anticipated than the actual griddle review itself. The big breakfast is kind of a tradition we've created ourselves. Basically just shows you what the griddle can do and what it cannot do. There are some updates to this video that I like to just piggyback on our original review. There's been some questions and or concerns about the way our configuration is with the two burners. Uh, there's a video out there from Camp Chef that specifically says that the burners have to be turned with the holes facing down. If you get one, you'll understand. Um, after reaching out to Camp Chef personally and then checking with the engineer, they just want to make sure that you guys understand it doesn't matter. It can go up or down. It does not affect the performance whatsoever. Mine are facing up. I hope I prefer that. If not, I can change them. It's not a big deal. Because remember, you have to put your tubes in, you know, like when you build your griddle. During That's the assembly. Yep. Uh, number two, we talked about the spatula kit along with the uh, paper towel holder and the water hold, water bottle and oil, hold, whatever you want to call it. So really quickly, this is what I was trying to mention without stumbling over my words. So you got the magnets there and then you have the option of putting it anywhere you want to. Same thing with a paper towel holder. This is three of them and you can put this anywhere you want to. This is why I was saying that I liked it in the front. I'll go and do that really quick because it felt like it was just out of the way. That might get too hot, so let's do it like this. You gotta remember when I was out there, it was a dang blizzard, something like that. It just felt like my arm just wasn't hitting the bottles or scraping the bottom of your hand. You can see how tall it is. So when you come over here, um, I'm right-handed, so naturally a lot of my utensils are on the right side. The bottle sometimes it stay, stays like uh, in the way. I like the fact that they give you the option to go over there. I'm done, done with that. Done with that, okay? Uh, second, uh, we mentioned the utensils. I mentioned the fact that the lid can fold over along with your utensils uh, being right here in that little uh, lid thing, traction, whatever. The point is, somebody commented and said, if your griddle gets that hot on the exterior, I wonder how hot your utensil will get. Well, I'm gonna leave this here today while we're cooking so we can find out because I want you guys to understand that. This is the, the spatula I was telling you about. It comes in one of their kits. Just show you the difference and the reason why I actually like this one. You see how sharp those edges are? So those are pointy. But they designed this spatula specifically for this right here, right in the trough. Um, and then this is a spatula that comes with it. So it mirrors mine almost exactly. But this is extremely sharp. So it's if you're... The beveled edge. Yeah. Here, hold it still for a second. But, you know, this is not the perfect tool for this either. You know, that's why I really like this one. I'm going to keep that one right there. Okay. So we're going to play around with them. Keep that there for heat. We'll be able to scrape the trough as well. Here's the silicone mat. We'll get rid of that one. I like keeping it on there for now. We don't want low. Low is not going to get us anywhere. So let's go to about, um, we're going to do uh, hash browns first. So let's go to a medium. And we're just going to go for even heating, okay? So, why big breakfast? Why have we done at least 17, 20 big breakfasts so far? We just try to use a lot of... Da, 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 da. We just try to utilize the whole griddle, right? I think it's a great way besides bread. Bread is just a, a visual, right? It just gets you there going. Like, this might be a hot spot. We noticed that this was a cool spot, so we can use that to our advantage. So now we're going to spread out hash browns. I got to be honest with you. I don't think really anybody's worried about whether or not this piece of griddle is the same temperature as this piece of griddle. I like to think, it's my new motto, I think you use 80% of your griddle. If 80% of your griddle is pretty much close to even without like 100 degree hot spots, I think you're good, right? I mean, temperature fluctuates. So if you just can imagine just like a, like a round area like this, that's typically what you use in griddle cooking, okay? So let's get that done. We got some... Uh, Potatoes right here. These are baking potatoes. I'm going to grate these. We're going to mirror the idea of why your hash browns suck. We're going to be able to put fresh hash browns down with a little feedback from you guys as well. Maybe I can up my game as well. It's just a basic outline. Whatever ingredients you add to them, that's up to you. We're just doing basic hash browns. Bacon. We haven't done this in a long time. Muffin mixed pancakes. We swear by it. We're about to leave out of town again pretty soon to go camping. We're gonna do another flavor combination while we're out there in the wild, in the wilderness, glamping it, as you guys say. Yeah, we, we glamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the food, we're gonna to try to relate to the same way. Like, no matter how we decide to sleep, 
the griddle is the griddle. We're in a tent or an RV or a hotel or a, uh, what you, not a hotel, <laughs> a, a, what's up there in Sevierville all the time? Cabins. Yeah. Right? If you decide to bring a griddle, you still face the same struggles that most people do. The What utensils you bring, what food you bring, and all that stuff. So, enough being said, let's just flow through this nice and effortlessly. We got the recipe here on theflattopking.com if you're interested. If you guys want to check out how to make your hash browns better, we got a video on that. And other than that, let's just do some B-roll and let's get it going. All right, our bacon's cooking right along. Four russet potatoes that have been uh, washed. We're just going to grate them. So the question is, does this get hot while your griddle's on? Yes. So as a design feature, I understand the concept, but I, there, is, there is no way. There is no way you're putting your spatula on that and just grabbing it, especially with the metal. Now mine might be a little bit different because I don't have the metal. So go ahead and grab that. And I ain't been on 10 minutes. Oh, with the metal? I don't even want to touch the metal, I'm yeah. afraid. <laughs> so I like the concept. Uh, there's just too much heat that pours out on the side. I'm not touching it. You should try it with yours. I feel like with yours, without that metal piece on the end, it, it would be better. I'm literally still using that grease trough as a place to hold the bacon. You know, we talked about how much surface area it has and all that stuff. So, you can see it funneling right in as it comes down. After your potatoes are grated, let's rinse them until the water runs clear and then we'll dry them. Some people recommended getting a salad spinner. Honestly, it's just another gadget in my kitchen that I very rarely use. Tea towels, the main goal, which was the whole part of the video, was just to get your potatoes dry. However, you decide to do it, that's up to you. Just get your potatoes dry. So I backed it off to low, just so I could get all my prep work ready. Remember, I had to do a lot of potatoes, clean up the bacon, all that stuff. I saved a little bacon grease, we're gonna put ghee down. So I just made it uh, a medium again, and I just wanna show you how. So that's 370, 370, 380. 380 so relatively extremely even when it comes to that one band right there so we're going to let the griddle come up to around 400 degrees something like that we're going to be throwing a lot of potatoes down we mentioned in the half round video that we did not find that there was one oil that reigns supreme over the other ones. It's amazing how many people wanted to use uh, ghee or tallow or swore by this or they use butter. I think butter's gonna burn eventually. Um, but the one thing we found was uh, clarified butter, ghee, something like that. And we mentioned that. I just didn't think that it warranted to say like, no matter how you make your hash browns, you gotta use ghee every single time. It's good, but there are other alternatives that made just as good as hash browns. That's what I was trying to say, if that came out clear. <laughs> All right, got some ghee. This is one of the times you hope that your ghee doesn't run into your grease trap and lose it all. You guys know if I'm seasoning my hash browns, I'm using my own seasoning, shake that. More or less even. I mean, that might look a little bit darker than that one right there. Uh, but we did notice that the left side of the griddle ran harder than the right side. One pack. 
one cup, quarter cup, one cup of milk, and one egg. Should have been a unit of measure, one cap full. Just give that a mix. Don't over mix it. Let this sit up for about five or 10 minutes. All right, got the hash browns off. Griddle's hovering about uh, 375. Throw a couple of these puppies down. Just like with our homemade pancake mix that we've got a recipe for. If you notice, I'm not going in there like really aggressively. I'm just kind of like spooning it out. That's what helps create those air pockets. You're not disturbing them. All right, the color is what the color is. It looks very, very, very even. That's what I experienced at Camp Chef when they did their pancake test. Uh, that's why I was surprised when I did the toast test, but you can see like we didn't really go all the way to the edge. So this mirrored a lot more than what I was used to. Um, this one was all the way over to the edge and you can see that that's what it was. I've already turned the griddle on low to start that heat calming down because we're gonna be cooking eggs. 375 might be a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit too high on eggs. Depends on how many you're cooking. We're gonna throw some scramble down, throw some over medium, some over easy and see what can happen. Take these bad boys off. Look at that. I mean, that is just fluffiness. Overload. Hair on the hot side, right? 350 is a hair on the hot side. I like about 300, but you gotta remember our griddle's calming down. Okay, it's not rising. If you're rising, you could hit it about 300 as the griddle rises. Now it's at 375, it will continue to drop. I'm gonna throw some butter down on the cooler side. Put two eggs down. I haven't really noticed whether or not this gets hot enough to really complain about it like, the, like this one right here, but I would be careful if you have a metal end. That did pick up a lot of heat. Got a little knob of butter right there. I've got two eggs scrambled with just a touch of cheese in there for my daughter. See how much easier my eggs are sliding around, how much seasoning we've added to the grill versus the first time we did it on our review where we did not season at all. I would highly recommend seasoning. Fluffy pancakes, that's what we like. Almost no syrup needed. <laughs> yeah. That means they actually are healthy. Okay, <laughs> healthy because you don't have to put syrup. Chocolate chip healthy pancakes. Mmm, that is good. Hash browns, they cook relatively even. I was happy with the, uh, the results. We do hash browns all the time. We decided to do them fresh this time. Typically we're that Simply Potato fan of the refrigerator. We get a lot of slack for it, but we don't care. Bacon. Looks pretty even to me. The eggs came off flawlessly. It's a good seasoned griddle already. Uh, coming pre-season, I think it just accelerates the success of your seasoning, if that makes sense. Instead of starting from like bare metal and working your way up, I think it offers forgiveness for some. Don't forget this griddle's at $4.99. I'm not a salesman, I'm just telling you. $4.99, bang for the buck is there. And that's it. All right, anything else? Nope. If you guys are interested, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on Instagram and follow us there. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Mm. I want a pancake. What if we did a pancake, egg, <sighs> bacon, and cheese sandwich? Oh, golly, I just love these pancakes. House browns are crispy. Muffin mix, pancakes. Mm. Mm.